Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride, ever feel your desire. One day I noticed that my life was broken. It was not me who was controlling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week five here in the Mid-Atlantic Modeling League's Chaos Cup. Tonight we have death-defying acrobats versus destructive dwarven demolishers. It's the carnivores versus the Dinnerbell Darlings, Nick Satan versus Doc the Minotaur. Kiss Left Circus versus Dwarves. Oh, beautiful. That's, that's the way to get the game started. <laughs> Let's take a look at the current standings. In Division A, the Masters of Mammal currently in first place with a record of 5-0-0. Undefeated in Division A, they are followed behind by McLeod's Maulers. They had their game early in the week. They drew with the Cetra Skellies. They are currently in second place. Artificial Bunnies, Poker Ratman. They are playing their game as we speak against the Brewmeisters. The Poker Ratman in third place with the Damaged Dragons and their draw this week. They are in fourth place. But in Division B, it's going to be the Dinnerbell Darlings who are up tonight. They are also undefeated with a record of 4-0-0. They're a dwarf team. They'll be paired up against the Kislev Circus, the carnivores of Nick Satan. They're currently in fifth place with a record of 2-1-1 in second place. That's kind of catchy, coached by Sweet Bunny. We haven't seen a lot of Sweet Bunny in this competition so far, but they are in second place with a record of 3-1-1. And Dad Fred with their loss Last night, they're still in third place, but they have a record of 3-0-2. First up, let's take a look at the Carnivores. They're coming in at a TV of 10.30 this evening, but they're going to be down two players. They need to pick up two linemen that's going to add an extra 120k to their TV, bringing them up to 11.50. You can see they're in rough shape here. They only have th uh, four players who have leveled so far. Going into week five, they have the lineman with the block skill. They have uh, the lineman Snickers with the block skill. The number three lineman Dumpling has the block skill as well. He's picked up block on Floppy, the number 11 Blitzer. Man, uh, <laughs> like as a Kislev team, picking up block, you know, you got to do it. You need block on these players, but he doesn't really have a whole lot going for him. We'll talk about what his strategy will be uh, a little bit later. He does have the catcher. The catcher has the dodge skill, but more importantly, that leap is a lot safer with that AG of four. Uh, <laughs> the converse is being a catcher, he only has a strength of two. No cheerleaders, one coach assistant, three fan factor, one oppo, four team re-rolls for the carnivores. They will be up against this number one team. Undefeated currently, the Dinnerbell Darlings, coached by Doug the Minotaur. They have a TV of 1190. That means they're giving up 40K in petty cash to the carnivores. Not a whole lot the carnivores can do with that. We'll talk about what their sole option will be in just a minute. Doug the Minotaur coming in with a full roster tonight. You can see he has three level two players, two long beards, one blitzer. They've all picked up the guard skill. Kevin Bacon's a level three runner. He has block and now he is a strength of four. What a devastating team this is. Dwarven teams are very good in Blood Bowl in my opinion. They all come with block. They're very resilient. Uh, you're not you're not getting anybody below an, uh, a strength of three. And now he has a runner with a strength of four. That runner is going to be absolutely impossible to take down. <laughs> absolutely impossible. <laughs> no coach assistance, no cheerleaders, three TRRs, one apothecary, four fan factor. How do the two teams play? 
Well, dwarves are pretty straightforward. They're slow. Um, they pack a punch with all that block and decent strength. They want to stay grouped up to get the assist to make those hits uh, even stronger. And that's why you see all this guard being picked up on Doug the Minotaur's roster. That's going to allow these grouped up dwarves to get those assists guaranteed turn after turn. He's going to take a bunch of marks and try to bash down this Kislev team. Kevin Bacon, this runner, the strength of four, he might hit with Kevin Bacon, but more importantly, Kevin Bacon's going to be so difficult to take down if, uh, if uh, the carnivores even get an opportunity to get at him. Uh, he's just a really solid ball carrier here with both block and now strength of four. Dinner bell darlings, they're going to group up, they're going to cage up, they're going to plod down the pitch. They do have the Troll Slayer with uh, uh, Dauntless not going to play a, a factor in tonight's game, but they do have Frenzy. They can leverage Frenzy to try to surf a player, um, but I think more importantly, they can leverage this Troll Slayer to open up holes in the defense. You're going to get that Frenzy follow-up, you get those two blocks. It's a very good way to push players out of position and open up a hole to move that cage down the pitch, especially because you're so slow with that MEF4, you want to make sure you're moving every single turn. Uh, it's really just that simple. On defense, he'll he'll stay grouped up as well. He'll try to stay in front of the carnivores. The carnivores, what they have going for them, the only thing they have going for them is all of this leap and very long legs. The very long legs could help them on defense against a passing game, but the Dinner Bell Darlings are not going to pass this ball tonight. Otherwise, this leap skill can be used to reposition. It's very hard to pin down these players because they can leap away. We've seen leap used to great effect on war dancers, uh, both last season and this season with Donkey Teeth. Uh, leap is a, is a fantastic skill. Uh, the problem with leap is that it's a die roll and it's a pretty chancy one. Now, it's it's pretty safe on the catcher with that AG4. Leap is an AG roll, um, but AG3, it's a little riskier. And so when your whole team revolves around chucking dice, that's uh, that's not where you want to be <laughs> because that's the thing you're trying to avoid doing in Blood Bowl. You're trying to, to not roll dice that you don't have to. You don't want to roll AG dice uh, and you want to roll as many block dice as you can, all things being equal. That's why he's picked up the four team rerolls. Uh, he's going to need them tonight. With just three players with block, um, he can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his team. Uh, I don't think he wants to say Mark. I think what he's going to have to do, and uh, this is this is how Kislev works, I think, but he's going to have to take key marks. He wants to tie up key players with as few players as possible. You know, some of these linemen will take some key marks while he tries to dash away with a catcher or a blitzer. He'll need to keep them safe for a while and then leverage his speed. He does have the speed advantage with an MA of seven to maybe leap away and then run away to safety. If he can do that, he might be able to pull out to, uh, pull out ahead tonight. Um, the, the, the problem is just all these die rolls, uh, Doug the Minotaur can really just sit back and make Nick Satan roll those dice. Just make him roll those dice, uh, burn down those team rerolls until he has none. And now Nick Satan's in a pickle. He's got a, a really tough time when he needs to leverage the, the one thing that his team does and he doesn't have a reroll to make it safe. Leap does not have a skill that gives you a free reroll either. So Nick Satan really needs to rely on these rerolls. And in order for him to come out ahead, not only does he need to take those key marks so that he can get his faster players down pitch, he'll probably need to leap them down pitch, but he needs to have expert reroll management. He needs to know when it's okay to reroll and when it's okay to have a turnover. If he can do that, he stands a chance. These are both very good coaches. Nick Satan, former league champion, Doug the Minotaur, obviously undefeated here in Division B. But on paper, uh, unquestionably, this game goes to the Dinner Bell Darlings. Uh, I love an upset, though, so I, I love to see the carnivores come out on top. All right, without further ado, we're going to head over, head on over to Cabal TV. We see uh, Nick Satan's currently in Discord. See if the coaches are ready. Not quite yet. 40k is coming to uh, coming to the carnivores in petty cash. He can't do anything with that. He does have 10k in his treasury. He could spend that. 50k gets you a babe. Maybe he picks up a babe. Maybe he's very afraid of uh, going down on players. He is going to have to take two journeymen. Journeymen come with the loner skill. Um, so maybe a babe's an option. Maybe. Maybe that's what you do. You take the 40K, you spend 10K, you say, you know what? I'm going all in. 
I'm going all in. It's week five. It's a critical week. I want to try to climb the ladder here. Um, maybe I pick up the babe just to ensure I have players on the pitch. All right. Still only see one. Oh, <laughs> I see. I see. There we go. <laughs> Doug the Minotaur was, in fact, on Discord uh, in a different channel. But now it's all sorted now. Uh, the coaches are probably ready to go. Critical week here in week five. This is, uh, including week five, there's three games left in regular play. After week seven, the top two teams in each division will advance to a single elimination bracket, a top four cut. Uh, the teams will get ranked by standing. Uh, so it won't necessarily be the top two. It won't necessarily be a, like a division championship. Uh, if, uh, for example, if uh, the top team in Division A has the best record and the top team in Division B has the third best record, then the Division A top team will be ranked one and the Division B top team will be ranked two. Looks like the carnivores are going to be on defense to start. They did pick up a babe, so they spent that 10k to pick up a babe. I think that's not a bad idea at all. Neither team with the fame advantage. Nuffle favoring neither. You can see... The two journeymen up on the line here. Very eccentric defensive formation here for Nick Satan. We'll see how Doug the Minotaur responds with his offense. Three-man defensive line shifted to the right here. Dinner Bell Darlings are going to set up with a five-man line currently. Probably pare that down a bit. Pare that up a bit. <laughs> You don't have a lot of movement with the Dwarven team, so you tend to want to kind of start advanced. Uh, you have a lot of block, you know, your, your strength is fine. So you start on the line, you bash down the defensive line, and then you just get that cage rolling. Pepe says, the nice thing here is that you never have to dodge, you can just <laughs> leap forever. Well, you can leap for four rerolls. <laughs> Here's the kick. Oh my goodness! Where is Hank the Ranger? We've got sweltering heat! Fairly shallow kick by the carnivores. Sweltering heat means that after this drive, if it, if it remains sweltering heat, everybody's gonna roll a die. Every single player on this pitch is gonna roll a die on a one. They're going to be passed out with heat stroke, and they're going to be knocked out and pulled off the pitch. Two die block on the line to start this game. You can see that guard skill in play. He's going to get a knockdown here. Breaks armor. Gets stunned. You can see he caged up around the ball first, just in case the die rolls didn't work out. This is good action order by Doug Minotaur. Gets a push here. Pushes directly uh, to the side of his line here so he can get another block. This will work out due to the block skill. Almost every single Dwarven player has the block skill to start with. In Blood Bowl, you want to take your least risky actions first. So he moved his players, his free players, to get some protection on the ball. Another guard break on the line. Two stuns on the line now. And then he took his blocks. He'll pick up the ball last, almost certainly. Still has a blitz on the table. We'll see if he elects to take the blitz or not. Doesn't look like it. Kevin Bacon's going to end this turn to pick this ball up. So try to pick it up on a 3+. plus. Gets it due to sure hands. Sure hands gives you a free reroll on a failed pickup. Turn one, back to the carnivores. <laughs> Hank the Ranger said, did someone say sweltering heat? <laughs> we did. <laughs> I 
Dwarves are a very slow team, so really all the carnivores have to do is stay in front of the caves. They don't need to screen out the dwarves, but they do need to be careful of getting picked off here. You can see Doug the Minotaur has all of his players on the line. He has his cage down here. He can use this split formation here to start picking off the defense. Nick Satan going in aggressive here. He's saying, you know what? I'm going to try to pick you off instead. I don't want this cage to move. Nick Satan moving his defense forward, staying one space off the Dwarven Cage. I imagine he'll put another player here. Going for the Blitz. Two die Blitz gets a push on Wyatt Burp. He wants to keep Wyatt Burp marked. He'll push him to the side. He follows up. With this positioning, he's cut off the diagonal movement for this cage. He'll want to fill in the gap here, though. Takes a mark on the big ragu, the number 12 longbeard in the right wide zone. Tries to leap away, fails the, fails the leap. Spends the reroll, lands on his feet. Takes a mark on General Tso instead. That's what we're talking about, man. You need those rerolls for leap. That's your gimmick. And there's really nothing to make it safe. Floppy the, the Blitzer, probably gonna sneak in here. Oh no, he's gonna go one space back. We'll move the lineman into position. I'm sorry, the catcher into position instead. Turn two, back to the Dinner Bell Darlings. These these columns are preventing the Dinner Bell Darlings from taking a single blitz and then opening up that hole to move the cage. If they blitz down a player, there's still another player exerting tackle zones. And this team, this is not a dodgy team. <laughs> they do not want to be taking dodges. Two die block, the start turn two. Gets a push by the big ragu. Two die block. Gets a pow here against Snickers. SP Beaver says, I feel I feel Leap fails almost as often as GFIs. <laughs> right? I mean, it, it should fail more. <laughs> but as we all know, <laughs> GFIs fail 900% of the time. Two dive lock, he's going to knock down the number three lineman, Dumpling. Kizla team has an AV of 8, which is not bad. It's pretty average. Two die block on Feathers will get a push. You can see Doug the Minotaur not afraid of these follow-ups because uh, he has the assist with guard no matter what. He has an AV of 9. He's very resilient. He has thick skull. Uh, and he has the block skill against the player who does not. is going to move back to center pitch up to the Darlene's own two yard line. Doug the Minotaur deciding if he wants to shift to the right or take some marks. He's going to take these marks instead. It would be uh, fairly trivial for for Kislev to reset these players back in front of the cage. Dr. Minotaur is going to take that mark and say, you know what, if this guy's going to leave, he's going to leap away. Carnivore is standing up their prone players. Mm -hmm. 
and now figuring out what the game plan is going to be. It's going to shift the defense back in front of the cage. This is good positioning for Doug the Minotaur here. The carnivores, with uh, with the pressure they're applying here, um, these players were knocked knocked down. They stood up. They didn't blitz, so they're going to stay put. Um, the carnivores really can't cover the whole pitch. What they'll probably want to do is they'll probably end up covering here. Two die blitz on uh, Soy Rogers. Oh, he's got a break armor. Gets a stun. We'll see if he can capitalize on that stun. Follow it up as well. They'll probably cover here, and then if if the Dinabout Dollings want to uh, want to get a decent movement next turn, maybe he'll get them to commit to the right wide zone. Clavy says even a stun against dwarves is pretty good. It slows them down a lot. Yeah, when you are knocked prone, it costs three MA to stand up. Dwarves are so slow with an MA of four. That means if they stand up from a prone position, they only have one movement without taking GFIs. And you can see, as mentioned, Nick Satan covering the gap here on the left side of the cage. Can't really get anybody to cover the gap on the right side, but if Doug the Minotaur is going to move down there, at least that's uh, that's one side of the pitch that Nick Satan will not have to defend. Has a two dive block to take with the journeyman. Gets the knockdown on the big ragu. Decides to follow up as well. That'll do it. Turn three now. Back to the Dinner Bell Darlings. <laughs> the Darlings, they are going to mark. They are going to punch. That's what they're going to do. All Nick Satan has to do to stop forward movement. Oh, Bingo is injured. He has a broken jaw. He's going to miss next game. The Apothecary almost certainly not going to be spent here. Well, it's his Blitzer. Maybe the Apothecary will be spent. No, one-man player advantage now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. <laughs> the Circuit Tempest. <laughs> Says... Bingo was his demo. It sure was. <laughs> Nick Satan taking these marks here. Um, boy, against Dwarven teams, I'm always afraid of these marks. I, I would I would take the marks if I could convert on them. Um, but you can see Doug Lamentar, he's pulling back a space. Um, Man, it just makes me nervous every time they punch, right? They've got block, and I don't. <laughs> They're just going to keep punching you. <laughs> Dog the Minotaur resets the cage now on his own four-yard line, takes a block on the number three lineman, Dumpling, gets a pow. Doesn't follow up. Wants to keep... The right the cage intact. 50 seconds now for the Darlings. Still have their Blitz. They still have their Troll Slayer. Troll Slayer with the Frenzy skill. Not going to Blitz. That'll be the end of the turn. Turn three back to the Carnivores. Very tight game so far. Tight... Space-wise, these teams are staying in base-to-base -base contact. They're they're really not spread out over the pitch. There's no need to be for the carnivores. Again, they don't need to screen out a team that's just not going to pass and doesn't have the speed to get around them. Two-die block gets a knockdown. Doesn't break armor on Paul Funyon.
Clefis asks, does Nick have someone with strip ball anymore? He does not. Nick Satan keeping this defense in check. This is what he needs to do. Just staying in front of that cage. He's giving up the left side of the pitch now. Um, I, I think these columns are, are a little too close together personally i would space them out to a pop because when you have gfi for a blitz here failed the dodge spent the reroll got a push out of it trying to apply some pressure to the back of his cage These columns, they're exerting tackle zones here, right? So that means if I have, say, a player here and a player here, they're covering all of this space by themselves. So I don't need players here and here. I can put players here and here. And now I'm covering, whoops, now I'm covering all of this space. So you could, you could spread them out a little further. Decides to reset this defense to cover the right side of the pitch and says, if you want the left side, come get it. Two die blitz. Gets the knockdown on the number 11, <laughs> number 11, number 11 blitzer, breaks armor, gets a stun. Not so trusty patches. Welcome to the stream. Rats versus Chaos Dwarfs just ended. It was a crazy game. I'll bet. I'll bet. Under a minute to play now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Blitzer moves forward. Looks like he's going to try to cross the line of scrimmage, perhaps with the ball carrier on this turn. Shuffling players to the left here. 36 seconds left for the Darlings. <laughs> that Troll Slayer, Gravy Crockett, he's going to move to the left side of the pitch as well. Just 11 seconds left with half the team left to action here for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They're trying to figure out which direction they want to go, if they want to stay put. But every turn they stay put, this defense wins. Shift laterally to the left does not cross the line of scrimmage. You can see the Darlings taking a bunch of marks on the right side here. They're going to try to make a move on the next turn. Two die block gets a push on Snickers, the number one lineman. That'll be the end of turn four. Turn four now for the Carnivores. Final turn of the first quarter. All these marks are intended to keep these players in place. He's trying to move forward here. He only has four turns left to move forward. Remember, he only has a movement of four with everyone except for Kevin Bacon, the runner. So if we consider that one, two, Three, that's four turns without GFIs. Carnivore is resetting this defense back in front of this cage. Exactly what they need to do. Keeping it really tight cage, uh, really tight defense here. Again, I, I'm not, 
I'm not sure this is necessary, but uh, I'm also not Nick. Nick is a <laughs> vastly better coach than I am. <laughs> No need to leap here. He can uh, he can dodge away. Oh no, he wants to leap with very long legs. Why not leap there? Right, very long legs will give him a plus one. That's why. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Leaps to the left side of the cage. Here's. Trying to set up the blitz here. Two die blitz on Gravy Crockett. Gets the knockdown. He's looking for the nine plus. Well done. Trying to shut down the left side of the pitch. There is a gap right here. Two dive lock on the right side of the pitch gets a push. Probably see a leap here with riddles. No, he's gonna take the block instead. You know what? That might be the better call. That might be the better call. I mean, that's definitely the less risky action to take. But now this defense, this defense is falling, falling down just a little bit. Turn five, second quarter begins for the dinner bell darlings. Not so trusty patch says, feeding the cat, then I can join in chat. Oh, all right, well, let me change out some graphics. Maybe <laughs> he says a gap like that I would just funnel dwarves in with no protection. Maybe Nix is trying to tempt him to do that. Maybe so. Hey, what's up, man? All right, artificial buddy has joined. Has has joined the chat. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How'd your game go? You'll just have to wait and see. All right, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dinnerell darlings now setting up that uh, protective wall on the right side of center pitch. Probably gonna shuffle back to the right here. Indeed, he does. Kevin Bacon now on the Carnivore's six-yard line. How can you stop a monster like Kevin Bacon? He can't stop Kevin Bacon. <laughs> How dare he think he can stop Kevin Bacon? Great marks by the Dinnerbell Darlings here. This is, uh, he's going to hope this is going to be the nail in the coffin for the defense. I think the carnivores are going to have to rely on some, uh, some die rolls coming up in turn five. Two die blitz on the journeyman, gets a pal. Did you see the good news? We have sweltering heat. Yay! Hooray! Oh, oh wait, no one's out due to heat yet, right? Yeah, it was on the first round of the game. Turn five back to the carnivores now. Defense has, has fallen uh, a little bit apart. He, he kept trying to apply pressure to the sides of the cage. Um, I, I don't like to get that risky, but again, I am not as good a coach as Nick Satan. So we'll see if this pressure continues to work out for him. 
tough to do when there's that much guard around. It, it's real tough. Gets the stand-up block with Floppy, the number 11 Blitzer. They have uh, um, jump up. Jump up allows you to not spend the 3 MA when you stand up as well. You can take a block when you're prone. You just have to make a, uh, make a roll for it. Two die block on Queso Bill, number 13 Longbeard. Breaks armor. Gets a stun. This is gonna free up uh, free up feathers over in the left wide zone. Clayface asks, can you get a two die blitz on the ball carrier? Um No. Oh, you mean with like a leap? Um yes. In fact, he can. I just don't know how he gets in there. I think the best he can do with the leap is, uh, like, maybe, like, here, and then leap to here, and then it's a dodge out to here. Yeah, but but it's still, like, it's not a, it's, I don't think it's a good leap. It's, it's a... <laughs> He's, he can't avoid the dodge, so. Even then, with strength four, it's going to yeah. be real tough to get a shot on that ball carrier. That's a great point. Yeah, Kevin Bacon has a strength of four, so the best he can do currently is get the one die. Fifteen seconds left for the carnivores. <laughs> Is he thinking about it? I, he can't possibly be thinking about it. Takes the one die blitz on Soy Rogers, gets the pal. And follows up to take a mark on the ball carrier. Sweet Bunny says that was a good turn for a shot on the ball carrier. <laughs> the leap failed. Carnivore said, you know what? I'm not spending the reroll here. That's going to be a turnover. It's got to be hard on the back. <laughs> Turn six now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block on the mark on the right side of the cage. Gets a push. One die block gets a push. Dinnerbell Darlings not only have to contend with opening up a hole, but all these marks are keeping players in place. Did I stand up blitz now against Dumpling? The number three lineman gets the knockdown. Clefie says, where do you move the ball now? Berserker Tempest says, right side of the pitch. I'm I'm not so sure. <laughs> Just three turns left to score on this half. Looks like he is going to shift to the right here. He's going to go to the three-point cage. He'll move the ball up to the Carnivore's 10-yard line. Two-die block with guard against Floppy the Blitzer. Gets another knockdown. Breaks armor. Oh, boy. Ooh. Entered his Floppy. And lost a point of MA. The oppo is going to get spent. You know what? That's a that's a fitting that's... injury. <laughs> he was about to lose a point of MA, just has a fractured leg instead. <laughs> One die block gets the push down pitch. And there we can see poor old Floppy. He's gonna 
<laughs> he's going to miss the next game with a, a fractured leg. The Apothecary's been spent for the rest of the game. That Troll Slayer's not playing around. Not at all. Turn six for the Carnivores now. They've been doing a, a killer job here on defense. Their defense is scattered at this point. Uh, I just don't know how you're going to stop them. Failed the dodge due to tackle. Tackle negates dodge. He's going to have to spend the reroll here. He's down to one reroll. That's not going to be the last time he dodges on this turn. Unless he's going to do a whole lot of leaping. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Two die block against Butch Casserole. The number 10 Longbeard gets the pal. Number 7 Lineman, the journeyman, still not freed up. He's marked by Grady Crockett, the troll slayer. I mean, he's got to start leaping players away, right? I don't, I don't see what else he can do here. Stand up blitz against Soy Rogers. Maybe not against Soy Rogers. It looks like he's going to try to leap away. There it is. There it is! One die <laughs> blitz against General Custer. Not gonna work out, dude. The block scale got KO'd. Tried to take out General Custer there, didn't work out. Now the Dinnerbell Darling's in pretty good shape. Two GFIs to score currently. Dinnerbell Darlings will be sitting on one reroll. They have three, only two turns remain. That's done an incredible job this season. Really been killing it. Agreed. I think both these coaches have been doing a great job, all things considered. Nick Satan with uh, what I consider a, a, a stupid team. <laughs> <laughs> Kinder words than I'd probably use, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i always find it very impressive he's he's picked up uh yeah he's picked up kislev he's picked up ogres before of all teams he picked up nurgle um i'm always impressed to see him he's not a he's he doesn't shy away from uh some of the more exotic teams and uh he, he's always hunting for ways to make them work and i think uh, a that's really fun to watch but b i think that really helps him become a better blood bowl pair, player he gets more experience with different um different play styles, different strategies, and he can incorporate that into his teams when he then goes on to play something like Lizards or Chaos. Love to see him play a vampire team. <laughs> I would love that too. In fact, we could probably convince him to. <laughs> <laughs> Clive says, hey, we people playing stupid teams have to stick together. <laughs> to die Blitz in the right wide zone. It's going to get the knockdown due to the block skill. Kevin Bacon not going to score this turn, but that's quite all right because this offense is in pretty good shape at this point. I think more importantly, it's, both these teams are probably terrified of the of the drive change, right? Like they they're terrified of those sweltering heat rolls. It's going to be real tough. <laughs> One of them gets an advantage. One die block by the Sunday Kid. It's a knockdown. 
Turn seven for the carnivores. Boy, boy, they're in rough shape at this point. I don't know if they can stop, <laughs> if they can stop the dinner bell darlings, but if they can, I'd love to see it. Fifey says, no vampires for Nick. If I win a competition this season, that's what I want to play as my ridiculous team in the next competition. Fair enough. I don't think vampires are ridiculous per se. Like, ogres are ridiculous. Vampires are just bad. <laughs> like, the actual vampire pieces are great. The problem is you have to eat your own people, so it's it's really tricky. This gets you used to the new wild animal rules for the next season. Oh? Well, bloodlust being similar to uh Animal Savagery or, animal or whatever. Savagery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Carnivores, another dodge to get in front of this cage. This is it's not going to be enough. They're giving up the right wide zone. They can't give up that right wide zone. Um, but boy, like this is just this is just a nightmarish position to be in. Stands up the number eight. <laughs> Stands up the number eight journeyman. Fails the GFI. Oh, he spent. Him. Yeah, spent the final reroll on the loner. Failed the loner, or uh, on the GFI. Failed the loner roll. That's going to be a turnover. Final turn of the game for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They can waltz into the end zone if they like. Or they can take some blocks. They do have a reroll remaining. In fact, they have three. They're going to take the blocks. They're going to get the knockdown here. <laughs> Carnivores are just hoping for a bad die roll at this point. Gets a push. And I can confirm that bad die rolls do happen. They do. <laughs> Big Satan praying to Nuffle for double skulls here. Doesn't get it. It's going to be a pow on Dumpling. Blitz still on the table. Who's it going to be? Probably the catch, or probably Feathers, right? No, it's going to be Lucky. It's going to be Lucky. Did I Blitz on Lucky? Gets a push. Surprised he didn't re-roll it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> and here's the score. One to zero. Dinobel Dallians are going to take the lead in this ball game. Well done. Great I score. Think that, yeah, that was a great score. And I think that was great play by both coaches. Uh, you know, that's solid dwarfing offense and I think Nick Satan with this Kislev defense did a really great job the only the only nitpick I have again is with when he set up those columns I think they were just a little too close together um, but again what do I know Nick Satan has a much better winning percentage than I do <laughs> my only complaint is that Doug isn't using the superior dwarven cheerleaders <laughs> the party boys <laughs> have lost one player to sweltering heat the Dinner Bell Darlings have lost no one, so uh, so far, too, so far, not too shabby for a, a final turn here. Uh, but uh, Swelter and Heat's going to get re-rolled again, unless the weather changes on this kickoff event. Carnivores get a ride. Do you think he'll try to score? Ooh, it's it would be pretty tough. What are you talking about? He's got a cool eight players on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> the ball scatters into the back half of the stadium. It's not going to be possible. <laughs> get the ref. Each team's getting a bribe. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Poor Nick. <laughs> or perhaps poor Doug. <laughs> Did I block? It's a pal on the line. He'll block on this whole line. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if he wants. Well, he might foul. He might foul this line now that he has a bribe. Do 
two knockdowns, two knockdowns on the line. There's a final block to take here. If this doesn't work out, he'll get a blitz out of it as well. Gets the knockdown. Boy, oh boy, I would love to see a foul on Paul Funyon. He has three assists currently. Four assists. <laughs> It brings him down to an 85, 84. <laughs> if this doesn't work out, I might riot. <laughs> AV3, yeah, let's go. <laughs> He's got to get the... <laughs> I never hate journeyman. All right, six assists. That reduces the AV by six effectively. Gets a stun out of it. He wanted more, <laughs> but doesn't get called off the pitch. <laughs> that's uh, that's, that's good SPP. news. <laughs> yeah. See if he can pull it off here. It's going to be a quick pass. Didn't work out, but uh, good effort. One to zero at the half. Carnivores are going to be on offense here. Uh, they're down three players currently. Uh, I don't think any are KO'd, are they? Maybe one of them is. They got their sweltering heat back. Let's see about Doug. Doug has Paul Funyan out due to sweltering heat. One player advantage for the dinner bell darlings, it looks like. Yeah, uh... Uh, 10v9 on the pitch. Paul Funyan, um... Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, anybody off the pitch is good. Um, he's probably hoping for somebody a little more devastating than Grady Crockett or, or, or uh, Kevin Bacon. But he'll <laughs> take it. I'm disappointed that we've only seen two players out with stroke so far. That's, uh... It's very... Nuffle, nuffle, please. Come on. Come on. <laughs> But we've already had a broken jaw and a fractured leg, so that's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty good. Four minute defensive bit. line. A little for bit of blood in our bowls. <laughs> Four minute defensive line for the Dinnerbell Darlings currently. Dinnerbell Darlings looking to screen out this Gizlev team. Remember, they all have leap with very long legs. They can leap behind this team. This team, uh, this Dwarven team, does not have the speed to catch up to some of these uh, faster players. In fact, they can't catch up to any of these players except for Paul Funyan, uh, uh, Paul Funyan, Kevin Bacon himself. Carnivore is putting another uh, journeyman out in the left wide zone. Currently have a seven man offensive line. I imagine that's going to change shortly here. I stand corrected. It did not. <laughs> Brilliant coachings. Both teams are going to get an extra reroll. I think uh, Nick. Oh, what a kick. What a kick. Nick Satan uh, benefits from that more than uh, more than Doug the Minotaur does. Two die block on the right side of the pitch. It's going to be a push result. Two die block on the center defensive tackle. Another push result. You can't get this both down due to. Uh, uh, do the block skill. Take another block. Oh, double skulls. I guess to spend that reroll he just got. Every time there's a free reroll. Every single time. I think it's the law. <laughs> it's in the rule book. <laughs> Final two die block at the line. Gets the knockdown on Queso Bill. Breaks armor. Gets a stun. Well, 
when you knock down a player on a block, you roll a 2d6 on... Uh, you roll a 2d6 to see if you break their armor. You have to exceed their armor value. If you do, you roll 2d6 again, this time on an injury table. Uh, 2 to 6, you stun the player. 7 to 8, you... Uh, I'm sorry, 2 to 7, you stun the player. 8 and 9 is a knockout. 10 plus is a casualty. If you get a casualty, you roll one more time on what's called a D68 in the rulebook. It's just a D6 and a D8. If you roll a 6 on the D6, you're dead. Otherwise, it's some form of injury. Good ball pick up by Lucky the Catcher. We'll see if he lives up to his name. Turn nine, <laughs> the Dinnerbell Darlings. You think Nick is going to try and score early and play for the win, or do you think he'll be just playing for the draw? Well, if he wants to try to make the cut, he's going to have to play for the win, I think. Um, but knowing him, I think he would be satisfied if he gets a draw in this game. Just because this is such a tough matchup, uh, I, I think he would be proud if he uh, if he gets a draw. I would be too. Two dice stand up blitz. Gets a pal on the Sunday kid. I'm sorry, gets a pal by the Sunday kid on the number seven journeyman. Lefty says they just want to tie up everyone. Yeah, I mean, they're on the line. Why not, right? <laughs> Put all those players on the line. They're not going to be much closer to these dwarves. Might as well. With all that guard, it makes them pretty safe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carnivores. Oh, boy. Let's see what tricky acrobatics they have up their sleeve here. Every single one of their players is marked, save for Lucky the Catcher. What do you think the plan was with putting so many people on the line by Nick Satan? Overwhelm? <laughs> <laughs> Just intimidate them with sneers? <laughs> <laughs> two die block gets the knockdown on the line. He'll fill in the gap. Now he'll take a two die block on the big ragu. Gets a push. Yeah, it's pretty risky if there's a perfect defense. Mm, yeah. Thankfully, there was not. One die block on the line. This will work out against General Custer. Wow, breaks armor again. Gets a KO. Well done, Eddie Gordo. <laughs> I mean, feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you guys know this is Tekken 8? It's, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> they really changed the way the game plays. <laughs> Tekken football tournament. Wait, did I just miss that? Did he spend the apop carry there? He did. He did. Kept the cutter on the pitch. Just done. Mm hmm. <laughs> Moves Lucky back a space. <laughs> He's afraid of General So coming after him. Good dodge by the journeyman. Over on the light, uh, right side of the pitch, but not a good GFI. Have you not learned your lesson? And he gets injured. <laughs> Guess that's what journeymen are good for. Two-man player advantage for the Dinnerbell Darlings. GFIs always fail. Always fail. 
It is a law of statistics. When you take a probability class in school, that's the first thing they teach you. GFI always fails. <laughs> Pipey says, I remember losing a journeyman to an injury in the last action of a game and refused to use my apothecary on it just out of principle. <laughs> Monster. Journeymen are people too. <laughs> That's when the journeyman gets the MVP. <laughs> just out of spite. <laughs> Did I block on the line? Gets a knockdown, breaks armor, gets a KO on Baggy, increasing the player advantage to three for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Hank, the Ranger, mercifully lowered the GFI failure rate from 900% to 99%. Thank you. Yeah, I think this aggressive line might have been his undoing here. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do against General So. I don't know how he's going to get this ball, uh, make this ball safe. Two white block of the line gets the pal. One die block against Riddles. The number two lineman gets a push. Flyface asks, how many journeymen did he have? Nick Satan, he had two. One still on the pitch. Turn 11 now for the carnivores. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Takes a one die block, gets a push on the line. This is going to free up feathers. The center. Lucky's going to move forward. He's going to pass the ball to Feathers. Failed interception. No, the ball was inter... <laughs> not so lucky now. He does not live up to his name. Couldn't make the clear pass. That interception would be on a six. Oh, man. There it is. Doug could score this turn. Just hand off to General So. Two die block at the line. Knocks down Snickers. <laughs> Berserker Tempest asks, how did that dwarf jump that high? <laughs> He's got some air on him. Gets a stun on Chuckles by Gravy Crockett, the Troll Slayer. Doug, the Minotaur is going to maximize his blocks here before we see this score attempt. Or he might just try to stall. He's got three players over here. Like he says, will Doug foul? Does he remember that he has the bribe? I don't think either players have remembered their bribe. Two that block, it's pal on, <laughs> on poor Lucky. Zerkotepa says, why stall? He has the advantage. Um, if he thinks he can win 2-0, that, that puts him in a better position in the standings. Better than first place? <laughs> no, but, you know. <laughs> point taken. <laughs> Still better to win 2-0 than 2-1. Fair enough. Better than undefeated? All right, all right. <laughs> Coming for the handoff of General So. Good handoff. Looks like it's going to be a score here. 
GFI to score. Nope. Looks like he's going to stall. Yep. That's what I'd do. <laughs> SB Viewer says he doesn't want he doesn't just want first place, he wants firstest place. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Turn 12 for the carnivores. There's really not a whole lot they can do here. Um boy. I, I hate to say this. I like to play for the win. I like to, to go all in. Every player just takes that risk, but uh I think at this point maybe maybe you just start thinking about saving your team. Did I block and sorry Rogers gets the push? Two die block on Riddles, the number two. Uh, I'm sorry, two die block on Wyatt Firth, the number eight Longbeard. It's gonna be a push result. <laughs> He's gonna go after the ball carrier. Fails GFI. Might as well put that pressure on, make him score, reset the drive. Might as well. And I want to look at the GFI stats. I can't. I, I think he's he's rolled a bunch of GFIs, so I think these are probably at odds. But it always feels like it's not, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of seems like it's been a snow game so far. Right. <laughs> Good leap by Feathers to take a mark on Butch Casserole. Another good lead. Turn 12 now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Final turn of the third quarter. Gonna take a two dive block against the number seven uh, journeyman to get a knockdown. Today, block back at the line of scrimmage gets a push. Each one of these blocks, Nick Satan's just hoping for double skulls. Two die block knocks down Snickers. And breaks armor, too. Gets stun out of it. It's not going to matter too much. Berserker Tepa says, Wait, is that Kevin Bacon in the distance? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Double pals on. Lucky the catcher. He only has an AB of seven, but doesn't break armor. <laughs> Clappy says Kevin Bacon only gets involved directly if the going gets rough. That's by contract. He had negotiated that. Two die block. Gets the knockdown on Dumpling. The number three lineman breaks armor. Gets an injury. Uh oh. Ooh. Smashed knee. Wow. Wow. There's the foul. Thank you, sir. Gets the foul. Gets a stun out of it. Gets caught off the pitch. The bribe will be spent. And there's a score two to zero. The Dinner Bell Darlings are going to increase their lead here. Party Boys really hoping for a whole bunch of dwarves to not be able to take the heat on this drive. We'll see if it happens. Hank the Reef says the rain game from this morning was bananas. I, uh, yeah, I, I did a double take when I saw the final and I was like, wait, was the game actually played? <laughs> Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Poor Nick. 
<laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh like man! With that injury. <laughs> Holy moly! I uh, 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 uh all right. Well, <laughs> well, goes out with sweltering heat. Can't get injured this time. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Here's the kick. All right, I think they probably are going to move to the Jason Square. <laughs> ah, Nick Satan, he says, you can't scare me. Let's go. Let's play some Blood Bowl. <laughs> First, he didn't move away. Seven man player advantage. <laughs> <laughs> for the dinner bell darlings three players out due to sweltering heat good catch by uh by old lucky <laughs> i think he's got to change his name <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> it takes the one die block on the line <laughs> i can feel the like the uh the, the attitude's like, you know what? Let's just go. Take the blocks. Let's go. I don't care. Let's go. <laughs> T-Nine Block gets a push. <laughs> He'll follow up and get another block on Queso Bill. Gets a pal here. <laughs> Speed Beaver says, look at him catch that on the kick. Nuffle clearly favors him. <laughs> <laughs> Turn 13 for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Their first time up here in the final quarter of this game. They have a reroll for every single turn. Oh, Lucky just sees a wall of dwarves. <laughs> we'll see all three of these players marked. Uh, Lucky is almost certainly going to just pass to someone <laughs> and just... Just hope for the best. Hank the Ranger says, will there be another podcast this Monday? Uh, we are, it, it's uh, in the middle of editing. It won't come out today. Uh, I hope it'll come out tomorrow, but we'll see. Yeah, there's there's all the marks on that three player contingent two die block on uh, riddles it looks like nope it's gonna be the journeyman how kind <laughs> how kind I think there says I somehow forgot today was Monday that's all right I forget that stuff too I like to say that no matter what there's always a chance but uh, it's not looking good for Nick <laughs> There's always a chance, but it is not looking good. He has four players left on the pitch. Three are on their feet. Looks like he's going to go for a quick pass here. There it is. Failed to catch. It's a six. He needs a six on this catch. He re-rolls it, doesn't get it. That's a turnover. Two die block. Gets the knockdown on riddles. Everybody's gonna get knocked down here. That's one. <laughs> Two die block gets the knockdown on Baggy, the number six line. Six armor. Oh boy, another oh. injury. Corey Strain's gonna miss the next game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eight man player advantage for the dinner bell darlings. <laughs> hey, that leveled up Gravy Crockett. Hey, good for him. 
<laughs> I would be fouling every single turn. Table this team. <laughs> SP Beaver says, does that give Doug a uh, player advantage now? I'm not really sure. <laughs> Let's see. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's got an eleventh somewhere. Um, Nick's got um, eight. Oh, wait. They're on the side of the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're all right here. That's that's where they are. The remaining triplet of the carnivores are all prone. Uh, I'd be very sad if we don't see a see a foul here. He has three assists on Lucky. Sorry, Lucky, but I feel I feel you're gonna get stomped in the face. Good pickup by the Dinner Bell Darlings. Oh no, foul! Oh, oh come on! Good sportsmanship is not allowed. Get out of here. <laughs> Dodge, have to spend a reroll. Cardi Force down to one reroll. <laughs> he had five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's still playing. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good leap. <laughs> Good leap by Lucky. Run away, Lucky. Oh, he's not going. He's going to keep on. <laughs> oh, Lucky's going to stay in the ball game. Good for him. <laughs> I'm going to cover my eyes. Will you let me know when it's safe? <laughs> <laughs> He's going for the journeyman blitz. <laughs> Two nine blitz gets a push. <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy. Why touch out the journeyman? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Turn 15 for the dinner bell darlings. <laughs> They're going to need to take at least one GFI to get their third touchdown in this ball game. Hey. One move by the Sunday kid. Gets a mark on all three players. He's got the two front corners of these players as well. If they want to leap away, they've got some dodges to make. Here's the blitz. Takes the blitz on Lucky. Doesn't break Lucky's armor because he's just that lucky. <laughs> Hank the Ranger saying, uh, so if he needs GFI, GFI, are you saying he can't score again? Well, he can now. He's got, he's got uh, uh, Wyatt Burp into position. He's got Kevin Bacon now in position. He just needs to do one GFI between uh, this turn turn 16. Um, but now, with the handoff, he doesn't need to do any. <laughs> so he's in good shape. If he wanted to score with Kevin Bacon, 
uh, he would need to do at least one GFI between the two turns. Come on, you can get a you can get a GFI blitz with uh, with the journeyman. I want to see it. Let's go. Two die. <laughs> Pill block on Butch oh, Casserole. It's gonna be a surf. Yeah, it could be a surf. <laughs> <laughs> journeyman journeyman blitz let's go <laughs> Did I blitz. Oh. 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 there it is Yay! <laughs> that's what well, we like to see. well done well done for the final turn. You know what? You made it count. Well done. <laughs> There's the score. Three to zero is going to be the final of this ball game. The dinner belt, darlings. I'm going to win it. <laughs> oh, <dear>. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Is there a turn left? <laughs> no, there can't yeah. be. The party boards were on offense. <laughs> GG's to both teams. <laughs> well, at least oh, the MVP chuckles. chuckles. Chuckles, the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, that's a lot of SPP for the dinner belt early. <laughs> Dinnerbell Darlings held on to this ball for 75% of the game. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Thank you, Craig Nate, for most SPP in one game. Oh, oh boy. All right. Let's see. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 10, 20, 24 SPP for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Hey, for the <laughs> Carnivores <Cup> got five. <laughs> oh, oh boy. This was uh, always a tough matchup. And uh, I, I gotta say, I really appreciate uh, <laughs> Nick Satan uh, uh, putting up the fight that he did. I think his defense was excellent in the first half. I think putting all those players on the line in the second half is really what did him in. Uh, I, I really don't think he wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this team, as we talked about in the pregame. Um, and it nearly tabled him, but uh, still still a good game and a good showing. And uh, he fought until the very last turn, right? He got that surf on the last turn. Well done. Oh, man. All right, let's take a look at the schedule before we leave. That was crazy. As you can see, that is it for week five. There are just two weeks left in regular play in the Chaos Cup. Week six will kick off tomorrow night. Uh, the coaches will be able to start scheduling their games uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, when they do schedule those games, you'll be able to check it out and get alerted to the schedules on our website at www.mammal.club here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, and watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl! <laughs> Where else? <laughs> Where else can Kevin Bacon and General Custer <laughs> absolutely murder <laughs> an entire team of circus acrobats <laughs> while, while half the team's out with a heat stroke. <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 on Steam. That's how we play our season games, soon to be Blood Bowl 3. That's in uh, just about two weeks and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Artificial Bunny, thanks for joining me today. Oh, play Blood Bowl. Play Blood Bowl, folks. Uh, until next time, we'll see you in week six and uh, enjoy the rest of your Monday night. Take care, everybody.